I'm gonna do a quick test, my new uh, secondary intro. So, uh, by the way, what's up, everybody? It's Chaos Three Seven Two Eight. I'm back again. We're gonna be playing some more World of Warcraft, dude. The Rix was Jr. Balls last night, Welcome to my channel. But Rigs Jr. Testing this said, so the you're, internet's you're still sucking balls. MR Hemi 4 SPD. Welcome to my channel. MR Hemi 4 SPD said Chaos Waving Hand. The internet no, no, sucking Don't ball. touch me there. This is my no no square. No no, don't touch me there. No no, my no no square. No no, don't touch me there. This is my stream no, no square. No no, welcome to my channel. No, no, stream my element no, no square. Said, stream elements bot running robot face. What's up everybody, it's Chaos for you 728 I guess that thing didn't... I need to do something with it. I don't know if it played the whole song or not. It was supposed to zoom all the way into a certain point around that square. Riggs JR said, yeah. yeah, that internet last night sucked so many balls. It resembled Susan's all, performance friend. last 10 years. Oh, no. Primo Living BC. Primo Living. Welcome to my What's channel. Primo Living BC said, Good morning, everybody. Hope all is well. I accidentally turned my fucking... <laughs> oh, need to mute that. Primo Living BC said, What's up, chaos? <gasps> Oh, same shit, different day. Just writing out the rest of my uh, my PlayStation ban. And I'll be back the 25th. Be able to play PlayStation again. I mean, I'm gonna be playing this a little bit more often because it's a paid. Uh, I'm paying for it, but yeah, I'm I'm suspended for PlayStation for a week for hate speech. I didn't even say anything hateful. Alright, we're gonna try this again. Hopefully shit works. My internet is looking good right now. That was me knocking on wood. Ooh-wee. Anyway, I hope all is well with everybody. Primo Living BC, welcome to the stream. Welcome back, sir. Glad to see you. Riggs Jr., Mr. Hemi Forsby, hope all is well with y'all. Let's go ahead and get right into this dumpster fire. The same shit, different day. I'm gonna be playing till about probably 2.30. And then uh, I'm gonna read this book. MR Hemi 4 SPD Man, said, if I'd have known, hate speecher. If I'd have known talking the truth was hate speech, I'd have been, <laughs> I guess I've, I've been committing to hate speech for ages. <laughs> That's clearly what it is. Clearly. Uh, I've been speaking hate speech for... Since I was knee-high to a freaking grasshopper, yo. Eh? Against the scourge and any other threats that lie in the... What? Bingus. Welcome to my channel. Yeah, no, I'm a Bingus. Bingus! Said, That's good, brother. Thanks, Corey Slater. Yeah. You fucking man girl. 
you think you know someone, and then you compare them to a left wing retard, and they re all over your fucking PlayStation channel. All right, we'll do this. Actually, it's let me log all of them, so why the hell not? I'll just pop them all. Shit. Oh. Warriors of the Horde, get your axes and sharpen your spears. The Burning Legion has returned to our world. Um. I'm probably gonna regret this. Reinforce the strong. I don't even think I'm. I'm not even at these places yet. Oh my god. The question is, what level are they gonna be? I'm gonna die. Oh man. What's up, Bingus? How are you doing, sir? Hope all is well. Hope everybody's having a great day. Managed to survive Tuesday. Or wait, Monday. See, I. You know Bingus what? said, I "Sorry, even... chaos. Hello." Oh, that's not good, bro. I, I, I need, I need to hit my ball real quick. <laughs> that's what it is. Samantha P. Welcome to my channel. <coughs> Samantha P. Sam said, "Welcome to the stream." Afternoon. <laughs> Victory hand medium light skin tone. <coughs> Polska Bob, uh, welcome uh, to my channel. Polska Bob uh, said, "Chaos 07." Uh, what's up, Polska? How you doing, brother? Oh my god, dude, that was probably the last hit off that thing. Fucking the worst. Oh. Best part of waking up is a nug up in my bowl. And I haven't even smoked yet, so let's get this dumpster fire. Let's start this dumpster fire right. So, oh, there's actually a few people in here. I wanna. I, uh, come on. Oh, damn it. That's right, I got an alt tab. Which y'all let me know. Polska Bob said, Chaos Bandmate just dropped a new song, it's awesome. No, no, don't touch me there, this is my no, no square. No, no, don't touch me there, no, no, my no, no square. No, no, don't touch me there, this is my no, no square. No, no, don't touch me there, no, no, my no, no square. Square, 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 square. on loop that's where I screwed up I got it now all right cool okay that's good to know I need to have the video on loop in order for that to keep playing but it's gonna keep playing <laughs> The video ended before the song quit playing, so <coughs> that's how I know something fucked up happened. <coughs> I'm amateur at this shit. <coughs> I work with a guy that expects me to be like professional with it. <coughs> In fact, I 
think I told y'all about him a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. We had a sort of falling out. He uh, was trying to micromanage me, and, and I'm not one to be micromanaged. And then uh, made the mistake of saying don't get cocky Riggs JR I wasn't cocky. said, don't look up on copyrighted baby metal Polska won't leave haha. <laughs> Ah, I need him. I need all the subs I can get. By the way, I've started a new thing. Fuck eating the beans. I'm gonna do the one chip challenge. If I can get to a thousand before the end of the year, I'm uh, I'll eat two one chip challenge chips. Bacon brought up the question: If I can get nine thousand by the end of the year, would I eat a nacho trash? No, I'll eat a, I'll eat nine of those chips. There's what I need right there. So, uh, last night after I, I had, I was forced to end my stream because I was having really bad latency issues for some reason. Me and, me and dude ran around for like another hour. Like, I didn't go to bed till like five o'clock. And, and we dueled probably. Four or five more times after that. And, uh, he beat me twice and I beat him five times. The only thing is, he's from a different server, so I'm kind of confused as to how that worked. Like, how he's able to join, because I'm, I'm on a totally different server. I mean, it's cool that they allow people from other servers to come through. I think that's a really good cool feature. I don't have a target. This kind of puts you in a. I mean, we're in an instance with others, but yeah, that's a neat little feature that World of Warcraft has added. Now, if they could just get a good team in there instead of doing all hiring diversity clowns and equity fucktards they could get back on track into making wow the game that was supposed to be as long as Polska Bob keeps hiring them diversity said, retards yellow fever equals copyright Urgh. strikes jr oh, copyright it <laughs> I don't know if that's the, if that exists, but uh, I will definitely have to look into that. <laughs> Hopefully tonight when I get on, get back on, it uh, it won't be, I won't be having issues too. Let's just keep our fingers crossed. So, I guess in one or two chapters, there's, <laughs> there's some reading in it, man. Polska Bob. I think the first chapter said, alone is like. You guys, days. Quantum Leap I fans? Need to target something first. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're uh, redoing Quantum Leap, but they're replacing the white dude with, uh, with the person of color. Uh, it's the same shit they've been doing, you know. Taking a turd, polishing it up and rebranding it, and then uh, passing it off as something hit and new. Hip and new. Wow. Alright, I'm going back here. Primo Living BC yeah. said, oh, God. I watch. I'm not gonna watch it. I watched the old Poles shit. Kebab said, Reboot yeah. was last night. Fucking garbage. I'm not gonna watch it. And like I said, it's gonna be the it is it's gonna be the same concept. It's just a different face. There's no point in watching it. 
And you know Primo they're probably gonna be BC. throwing the diversity Said. and I watch all Mayans that MC bullshit. that's it though. Uh, even watch Mayans, okay. Mayans wasn't bad. I liked the Mayans. I liked um Sons of Anarchy. Those were good show series. Sons of Anarchy. Woo! That was uh ha <laughs> Polska Bob said, yeah. "There's a non-binary person, whatever thing, made it unwatchable." Jim would like to chat with you. Uh, as a game master, correct. So I was going over your support ticket and saw you were online. You have a few minutes to talk with me. Sure. How can I help you? Oh, God damn. I got a GM message in me. Hopefully I can get the account. Oh, God, yes. Ah, shit. Get off my dick. Samantha P. Fuck off. Said, Fucking cats. Hate when someone tells you not to do something you're already not doing. Eh. Or vice versa. Like when you're That's about to, or in the process of, up. cleaning like. or fixing something. Kills your initiative 100%. No, it pisses me. It does Primo the opposite Primo Living me. BC. It pisses me off. Said. Sons of Anarchy yes. was good. Such the Shield was my favorite show of all time. Accusing me of something I'm not even doing. Like, I was I was running the stream for, for Sunday service. And I was like, I got this. And he's like, don't get cocky. And I was just like, <laughs> and that was the, the catalyst. I see you were looking to get this game time transfer to another account. I can do that in this case, but I also noticed you were still playing here. Are you still wanting to get that time? Oh, God, yes. Yes, definitely. Yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. I'm just killing time. <laughs> Oops. I'll log off so you can do that. You can get that going. <laughs> Greatly appreciate y'all working with me. <laughs> I'll log off so you can get that going. I greatly yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> Exit now, exit now! Yes! Yes! <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little excited right now. Oh man, this means. Alright. Polska Bob said, I totally made the wrong turn. Oof. That's unfortunate. You should have been paying more attention to the road instead of your phone, Polska. Um, hmm. Ah, shit. I seriously forgot the fucking password. I just changed it, too. That's the worst part. I thought I changed it to what it was. But bear with me. I've got to do this verification bullshit. Okay. That's fine. Oh, fuck. I guess it would help if I logged into the fucking email address, too, yo. I'm having a slow moment. You'll have to forgive me.
fun part's going to be remembering the password. Okay. Found security concerns. Solve now. Yes. Ah, oh, crap. You know, made me verify shit. Man, this lengthy process. I haven't been to this inbox in a hot minute. Like, a really long time, apparently. Because, uh, it didn't send... Tell me it was that. Oh. Okay, there we go. Secret question. Oh. Oh man. There we go. All right, hopefully this works. This isn't right. Oh no. This isn't my... This isn't... Oh, fuck my life. I think I just got Jude. I think I Jewed myself. You didn't even. Oh, fuck my life. Yo, this has no max level characters on it. Oh, man. Don't tell me I just fucked myself. And it's gonna make me say I bought it on that other account. Huh? Well, that wasn't the account. <laughs> that wasn't the account. Oh, I ain't seen no max level character on this. 
Uh, I'm still having a problem here. Yo, I'm not seeing any max level characters. Well, this is great. If anyone thinks it's another. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck. It didn't. This is frustrating now. I bet she's gonna make me pee. Yep. Yep, they want me to pay for the new shit. Ha! Ah, fuck my life. Well, I'm gonna read. I'm frustrated now. Oh, so much for the gameplay. That's the wrong thing. All right. Well, that's unfortunate. And I'm at this. Is, uh, I wish they had a fucking phone number, and so I didn't have to contact them through the emails, man. Where the fuck's my Kindle thing? Alright, so... I'll be reading chapter one of solving the mystery of Babylon the Great. I, I wish I could bring this up on my computer, but it's through my phone, because I have it downloaded on the Kindle Fire. But, uh, hope you enjoy. Uh, this is a very, this book goes over a lot of different topics, a lot of different topics that I've been going down since, um, reading, rereading the Bible. Um, so, the first chapter is The Great Wonder in Heaven. Most people focus on the harlot, Babylon the Great, and the Book of Revelation. Samantha P. But there's another woman in said, Revelation who holds the key Oh wait, I know QL. I didn't see it, but harlot. I saw a commercial promotion for it and I was PMSL. A time traveler that turns into different people and needs to yep. change their life in order to return. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God, and to his throne. Revelations 12, 1, 5. I don't know what the A theme means. Who is this woman? Let's look at the clues. She has upon her head 12 stars. What is the meaning of those 12 stars? God, in the book of Genesis, reveals the answers. Joseph, who is one of the 12 children of Jacob, a.k.a. Israel, explains a dream to his brother. The dream describes his brothers as 11 stars. Of course, Joseph is the 12th star, making the 12th stars of 12 stars of Israel. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren and said, behold, I have, a dr have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father. 
and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? That's Genesis 37, 9 through 10. Notice that Joseph's prophecy not only depicts 11 stars, but also depicts the sun and the moon making obsense to him. The woman of Revelation 12 was clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Joseph's father, Jacob, understood that the moon and its sun symbolized Joseph's mother, Rachel, and father, Jacob, also Israel. The woman in Revelation 12 is Israel, but not the Israel of the earth, but the Israel of heavenly Israel, of the promise. Notice that the woman in Revelations is a great wonder in the heaven. The Israel of Revelation is heavenly spiritual Israel. Not all who are of the Israel on earth are the Israel of God. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham, and they all and they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called, that is, they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. <clears throat> the promises made to Abraham flowed not to four physical, SPD but rather his said, spiritual seed. Sunday school? Yes, we're getting an education, sir. This is from Solving the Mysteries of Babylon the Great. Um, this is very important. This, 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 there's a lot of eye-opening stuff in here. Uh, the promise made to Abraham flowed not to his physical, but rather to his spiritual seed. Now to Abraham... And his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. Galatians 3.16 Those who have faith in Jesus Christ are the seed of Abraham, and inherit the eternal promise made to him by God. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Galatians 3.29 So, the spiritual Israel of Revelation brings forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Revelations 12, 5. MR Hemi 4 man SPD Revelations is Jesus said, Christ. Read the Torah next. Yeah, that's the fun part. It, it covers that. It covers all of it in here, man. He is taken up to God and to his throne and rules the nation with a rod of iron. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Luke 22, 6, 9. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a, iron of, a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Revelations 9, 15. Jesus is the prophesied son of David, the promised seed of Abraham, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Matthew 1, 1. Notice that the great red dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for the devourer her child as soon as it was born. Revelation 12, 4. Who is this great red dragon? It is none other than that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the world. Revelation 12, 9. The child that the great red dragon was ready to devour was Jesus, who was the agent of the devil that tried to kill Jesus. Herod, king of Israel. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he MR Hemi 4 SPD inquired said of the wise men. China. Mm, Matthew two sixteen. The dragon was then cast out of heaven to the earth, and when the dragon saw that he was cast unto earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Revelations 12, 13. The woman was then protected by God. The dragon then made war with her seed. Who is her seed? They are the children MR of Hemi God, 4 SPD who have the testimony said, of Jesus Christ. Revelations China is 12, the red 17. dragon. Actually, I think communism and socialism is the red dragon, but... We'll, we'll get into that. 
And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for all for a time, and times and half a time. For the face of the serpent, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. That's Revelations twelve fourteen thirteen two. Notice that after the dragon was cast to the earth, a great beast was seen rising out of the sea. This beast has the name seven headed, has seven heads, and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head, as a dragon who was in heaven ready to devour the newborn child in Revelations 12, 3. This is clearly the earthly manifestation of the dragon, who is the devil. The description suggests that it is a continuation of the heathen governments of the earth. In Daniel chapters 7 to 8, we read that the leopard, the bear, and the lion were symbolic of three successive kings. Daniel refers to a fourth kingdom that would be diverse from the rest. That kingdom will have ten horns, and one of the horns shall speak great words against of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Daniel 7.25 The key to identifying the horn of Daniel is to find an institution that has changed God's laws and times. And this is where it's going to get... Fun! The Jews considered a violation of any of the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20 to be a capital offense. In order to avoid such harsh punishment, the commandments are reinterpreted through tradition to mean something other than what it is said in the text. For example, the Eighth Commandment in Exodus 20.15 is against stealing. Uh, against stealing is given a different meaning. Wait. Wait, what? Exodus 20.15. There we go. Give it a different meaning. It is interpreted by the Jews to not be prohibited against stealing property, since stealing property is not a capital offense under Jewish tradition. The Jews limited the Eighth Commandment to be a prohibition against stealing, that is, kidnapping a Jewish person. Eighth Commandment is also not considered by Jews to be prohibition against stealing, kidnapping a Gentile, since kidnapping of Gentiles by Jews is allowed by Talmudic law. We'll be going into that fun stuff too. Changing God's laws is a practice that was inculcated into the Roman church by the crypto-Jews, who had established a long tradition of rules that nullified God's commandments. While typically the Jews nullified the commandments through interpretation, the Catholic Church opted for a more direct approach of simply rewriting the commandments. In order to avoid God's prohibition on graven images, the Catholic Church deletes the second commandment, they have changed God's law. The second commandment in Exodus chapter 20 states, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth below, beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. This leaves the Catholic Church with only nine commandments. The Catholic Church simply splits the last commandment into two commandments to make up the missing commandments. The single commandment against coveting is changed into two commandments against coveting thy neighbor's goods and coveting a neighbor's wife. Catholic Ten Commandments are different from God's Ten Commandments. God's first commandment states that, I am thy Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The traditional Catholic catechism 
simply states the following in place of the first two commandments. I am the Lord your God. You shall not have strange gods before me. Notice that the prohibition against making graven images and bowing to them or serving them is deleted. In addition, the, Roman, the Romish church allows the wor worship of other gods as long as they are not strange gods. So it is permissible to have Mary and all the saints as other gods because they are not strange gods according to Catholic doctrine. They have changed commandments of God in order to set up their own religion in direct opposition to God's true commands. The Catholic Church has also changed the times. Claims that the Lord's Day is the first day of the week, Sunday, because Jesus purposely rose from the dead on Sunday, and that consequently Sunday replaced the seventh day, Saturday, as a day of rest. The only reference in the Bible to the Lord's Day is found in Revelations 1.10, and is probably a reference to the Sabbath of the seventh day of the week, Saturday. We are justified not by keeping the Sabbath or any other ordinance, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus nailed the Old Testament law to the cross. He nullified the requirements of the law on our behalf. We are no longer obligated to the law, including the Sabbath's requirements. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. But the body of Christ, Colossians 2, 16 to 17, God did away with the requirements of the law under the New Testament, in that he saith, a new covenant he hath made the first old, now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away, Hebrews 8, 13. We keep the new law out of love for God. Our obedience to his new law is evidence of our faith. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. That's John 13, 34 to 35. The Catholic Church, on the other hand, requires that on Sunday and other holy days of obligation, the faithful are to refrain from engaging in work, or activities that hinder the worship owed to God. As a result of the Roman Catholic Church's twisting of the Holy Scripture, they have changed a Sabbath day or day of rest from the last day of the week, Saturday, to the first day of the week, Sunday. The Roman Catholic Church's changing of the day of rest from the seventh day to the first day of the week, along with their deletion of the second commandment, is a fulfillment of the prophecy in Daniel that the horn would think to change times and laws. Jesus was crucified on Passover, which was the fourth day of the week, Wednesday, Matthew 26, 2. It's in John 13, 1, 18, 28, and 39. Jesus was crucified on the day of Passover, Luke 22, 23, Matthew 26, 2. That is why the day Jesus Christ was crucified is referred to as the preparation of the Passover, and not the preparation for the Passover. The Passover was the preparation day for the unleveled Un unleavened bread Sabbath Binkus that allows follow said Passover. John three sixteen is a different one too. Yeah, it is. And it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. John nineteen fourteen. The day Jesus was crucified was a preparation day before the Sabbath, Mark fifteen forty two which is why many believe it was the sixth day of the week, Friday. What many do not realize is that there were many other Sabbaths throughout the year in addition to the weekly Sabbath. That would mean that there would be many occasions when there would be two Sabbath days during some weeks. The week of Jesus' crucifixion was on one of those weeks with two Sabbaths. How does he know? There were two Sabbaths because the Bible states that Christ was crucified the day before the High Sabbath and not the day before the weekly Sabbath. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilati that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. That's John 19.31. The next day after Jesus' crucifixion was the High Sabbath, 
It was the first day of the seventh day of the, of the seven day feast of unleavened bread, and the fifth day of the week, Thursday, John nineteen thirty one. The fourteenth day of the first month is the Passover, Leviticus twenty three four to five, Exodus twelve seventeen to eighteen. I'm only citing these because that's that's your references. Passover is immediately followed by the seventh day of the unleavened bread, Leviticus twenty three six seven, Exodus twelve fifteen sixteen. The Sabbath day is a day of rest. God ordained that the 15th day of the first month, the day after Passover, was to be a day of rest. That is a Sabbath day. Leviticus 23, 6, 7. The next day, the sixth day of the week, Friday, the women brought the spices. Mark 16, 1, and prepared the spices for Jesus' body. Luke 23, 5, 6, 6. The women prepared the spices and ointments before the Sabbath. Luke 23, 53, 24, 3. But they did not buy the spices until after the Sabbath. Mark 16, 1, 6. How can one prepare the spices before they are purchased? It would not be possible unless there were two Sabbaths. The women prepared the spices before the weekly Sabbath, but had purchased them after the unleavened bread Sabbath. Those passages point to a Wednesday crucifixion, with the unleavened bread Sabbath the next day, Thursday, and Christ rising from the dead exactly three days and three nights, 72 hours later, on the weekly Sabbath, Saturday. The women would have both purchased the spices and prepared them on Friday, which would have been made before the weekly Sabbath on Saturday, and after unleavened bread Sabbath, which was on Thursday. The tomb was found empty on the first day of the week. He did not rise from the dead on that day. And it's going to go into the reading scripture again. The women rested on the seventh day, Saturday, which was the weekly Sabbath. Luke 23, 56. Early the first day of the week, Sunday, they came to the tomb to find it empty and saw an angel who announced that Jesus had already risen. Mark 16, 1, 6. Just as Jesus prophesied, he rose from the dead precisely three days and three nights after his burial. Matthew, 20, Matthew 12, 40, 2019. While the tomb was found empty on the first day of the week, Sunday, he rose from the dead on the evening of the seventh day. To hold that Jesus was crucified and was buried on the sixth day of the week, Friday, and rose from the dead on the first day of the week, Sunday, would be to say Jesus was wrong about his prophecy because he prophesied that he would be in a tomb three days and three nights. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so was the Son of Man by three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, Matthew twelve forty. The span between the evening of Friday and the early morning of Sunday is not three days and three nights. However, a Wednesday burial with a Saturday resurrection is exactly three days and three nights. And that was the end of chapter one. And I'm going ahead, so I got time. <laughs> We're going to go on ahead and read into chapter two real quick, and then... Uh, I'm going to try and jump onto another game. Since uh, I think I was played. So, chapter 2, The Other Woman. The Horn of Daniel, which is symbolic of the Pope of Rome. Change the times and the laws of God. The Beast of Daniel has the same ten horns at the Beast in Revelations. We see the Sea Beast again in Revelation 17.3. And this time there is something riding the Beast. It is the same beast with seven heads and ten horns as a dragon who was in heaven ready to devour the newborn child in Revelations 12.3. And the beast arose from the sea in Revelations 13.1. The beast could not destroy Christ or his church, so he tried to create his own devilish Christ, the Antichrist, and his own counterfeit church. The church of Jesus is a chaste bride. 2 Corinthians 11.2. The devil's church is an imperious harlot who is riding the beast. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colors, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, MRME Four SPD, great, Mother of said, Harlots, and cool story, bro. of the Earth. Oh, this isn't a story, sir. This ties shit together. 
a lot of shit. <laughs> This is a 374-page book, sir. And I saw the woman drunken with their blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Revelation 17, 3, 6. Recall that the dragon made war against the seed of Christ, the children of the first woman. The devil decided to establish a church and use the church to war against the children of God. This is a spiritual war. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit even so it is so now galatians 4 29 the children of the flesh and the devil's church are cannon fodder in a spiritual war against the children of the spirit and the church the true church of christ the roman church considers mary the mother of the church is the catholic mary the mary of the bible there is a mother mentioned in revelations she is the harlot with a name upon her forehead mystery of babylon the great mother of harlots and abominations of the earth revelation 17 5 can we know who is the mystery harlot god reveals her identity by explaining that the beast that she rides has seven heads and the seven heads are seven mountains of which the woman sitteth revelation 17 9 another clue is that the woman is a city and the woman which thou sawest is the great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Revelation 17, 8. Where are the mysterious seven mountains? Rome has traditionally been known as the city of seven hills, and also seven mountains. A mountain is simply a large mass of earth that rises above the common and or adjacent land. It does not have to be... Bingus said, You find these secrets on High Hrothgar. Mm. The mountain accurately describes a large hill. There is only one city that can meet the description of a city on seven mountains. Rome. Rome is famous for the seven mountains upon which it sits. The mountains are the Cap Capitoline, the Quar Wow, I can't pronounce these words. Quirinal, the Viminal, the Esquiline, the Calion, the Avenue, and the Palatine. Alexander Hislop points out in his book the two babylons that even pagan poets and orators would have no uh, would have no thought of elucidating biblical prophecy described rome as the city of seven hills hislop quotes virgil who described rome thusly rome has both become the most beautiful city in the world and alone has surrounded for herself seven heights with a wall virgil who died approximately 19 years before christ was born and therefore several generations before the book of Revelations was written. Hislop also quotes poet Sextus Aurelius Propertus, who describes Rome as the lofty city on seven hills, which governs the entire world. Oh man. All right, I need a second. I gotta hit my bong. <laughs> this is gonna start going into how the Vatican and the Roman Catholic Church are the uh, the harlot and the beast system basically, and and further go over it if I recall. <coughs> Notice how his description follows closely that which is constrained cons <coughs> contained in Revelations. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Hmm. Revelation 17, 18. Propertus died in 15 BC, and so he would have had no knowledge of the book of Revelation, <coughs> which was written scores of years after his death. <coughs> Marcus Valerius Metellius described the seven dominating mountains of Rome. Symmachus, the perfect of Rome introduced one friend of his to another by letter. In the letter, he described one friend as being deceptim, Montibus Virum, which translated means a man from the seven mountains. That was equivalent in the day, circa 351 to 375 AD. It's calling someone a civem Romanum, which translated means a Roman citizen. Now that we have identified Rome as the location of the seven mountains, who is Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abomination of earth? 
The Catholic Encyclopedia offers us a clue. It states that it is within Rome, called the City of Seven Hills, that the entire Vatican State is now confined. The Vatican, being in Rome, is the great mother of harlots. Bingus this book said, will present I looked up the Palatine evidence. Mountains and it shows some graybeard's castle. Mm. Bingus this book said, will present at the top, evidence of that truth. This book will also explain the link between the Roman Catholic Church and Babylon. First, we must find out how the mother of harlots got the title Babylon the Great. Our first clue is found in the Bible. We read in Jeremiah that Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Jeremiah 51.7 Notice that language is very similar to what God states in Revelations regarding Babylon the Great. She's described in Revelations as the great whore with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Revelations 12, 17, 2. God further describes her in the book of Revelations. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Revelations 18, 3. Notice the commonality and the characteristics between the Babylon mentioned in Jeremiah, which was written sometime in the 6th century BC, and the Babylon in the book of Revelations, which was written sometime in the 1st century AD. We have a span of approximately 700 years separating the descriptions. Bingus we have common elements. said, these locations all have crazy ancient artifacts. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of shit that the Vatican's hiding around there that they, that they don't, yeah, they don't want you to know about. Is, is, this book covers that too. In Jeremiah, Babylon made all of the earth drunken by her wine. And in Revelations, the kings and inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Seems that this wine of Babylon is an intoxicating mixture that is born of fornication. Do we find any other clues from the Bible as to what this fornication could be? The Bible gives us a clue. The Holy Bible depicts the Church of Jesus Christ as a chaste bride. Paul states of the Corinthian church, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. 2 Corinthians 11.2 Obviously, chastity has nothing to do with the flesh. Paul is referring to spiritual purity. The bride of Christ is described in Revelations as New Jerusalem prepared as a bride for her husband. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Revelations 12, 21, 2. Wow, I'm the stexic today. Here we have the church symbolized as a chaste city, adorned for her husband, who is Christ. How is she adorned? In Revelations 19, 7 to 8, we read that she is adorned in fine linen. How different is that from the bejeweled city of Babylon, who was arraying in purple and scarlet colors and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication? It's Revelation 17.4. The new Jerusalem is arraying simply in fine linen. Samantha P. Linen signify? said, it signifies I'm weary on the worshipping Jesus idea. Yeah. To skip the Colorado of changes made throughout history. We'll, we'll if you're supposed more. to worship no gods outside of him, that includes those in heaven and below. Well, there's Bingus only one God. Said, the I think of it like Doctor Strange Some when more. he goes and travels and figures stuff out, or like uh -huh. Batman begins. We have two very different women depicted in Revelations. Notice that in Revelations, a chaste bride is New Jerusalem. That suggests that there is an old Jerusalem. Is there a link between the old Jerusalem and the great horror of Babylon? When Israel was unfaithful to God, he compared Israel to a harlot. The following passage depicts the unfaithfulness of Israel, which parallels the sins of idolatry in the Catholic Church and provides a clue as to the common link between the religion of Israel and the religion of Rome. 
the commonality between the whore of Babylon in Revelation and the whore of Jerusalem depicted in Ezekiel is clear. Thou distrust in thine own beauty and place the harlot because of thy renown and pourest out thy fornication on every one that pass by. His, is, his it was. And of thy garments thou didst take and deckest thy high Samantha places P. with divers said, colors. His name is Jealous. Corinthians is some of my favorite segments. Yes, but many Christians and Catholics come. alive consider Jesus they and God the very same stuff. person. Yeah, they believe in the Trinity. That. Samantha P. The Trinity is said, that's not what they, they're alike they're asterisk. Yeah. No, Jesus was, he was born from God, but he was not God himself. If anything, he would be a Nephilim. Thou hast all, well, where the fuck was I? And of thy garments thou didst take and deckest thy high Binkus places with diverse colors. Said, and placed the harlot I learned all this in middle school and the they warned my teacher not to not teach it. Come, neither shall it, yeah, because this is, this book is going to be pointing the fingers at the Jews, sir. <laughs> That's why. And and I'm going to go into the history of the word anti-Semite. said, Here people were too. getting pulled out and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. They don't want people to know the truth. They can't handle the truth. So they silence them. Thou hast also taken the fair jewels of my gold and of my silver which I had given thee, and mates to thyself image of men, and discommit whoredom with them, and tookest thy broidered garments, and covered them, and thou hast set mine oil and mine incense before them. My meat also which I gave thee, fine flour, and oil, and honey, wherewith I fed thee, thou hast even set it before them for a sweet savour. And thus it was, saith the Lord God, moreover thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast borne unto me, and these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of thy whoredoms a small matter? That thou hast slain my children, and delivered them to cause them to pass there through the fire for them. Samantha and P. All thine abominations said, and thy That's what I think to chaos. He even says specifically that say I am a child of God just like all of us. I believe in a direct relationship with God and do not believe Jesus is God. No, that, that's, that, that comes from the, uh, the more of the Catholic uh, Protestant area, if I recall. And in all thine, abomin uh, all thine abominations and thy whoredoms, thou hast not remembered the day of thy youth, when thou wast naked and bare, and was polluted in thy blood. And it came to pass after all thy wickedness. Woe, woe unto thee, said the Lord God that thou hast also built unto thee an eminent place, and hast made thee an high place in every street. Thou hast built thy high place at every head of the way, and hast made thy beauty to be abhorred, and hast opened thy feet to every one that passed by, the, and multiplied thy whoredoms. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, great of flesh, and has increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. Behold, therefore I have stretched out my hand over thee, and have diminished thine ordinary food, and delivered thee into the will of them at, that hate thee, the daughters of the Philistines, which are ashamed of thy lewd way. Thou hast played the whore also with the Assyrians, because thou wast unsatiable, Yea, thou hast played the harlot with them, and yet couldst not be satisfied. Thou hast moreover multiplied thy fornication in the land of Canaan unto Chaldea, and yet thou wast not satisfied herewith. How weak is thine heart, saith the Lord God, seeing thou dost all these things, the work of an imperious whorish woman, and that thou built thine eminent place in the head of the every way and maketh thine high place in every street, and hast not been as an harlot, in that thou scornest higher, but as a wife with com committed adultery, which taketh strangers instead of her husband. They give gifts to all whores, but thou givest thy gift to all thy lovers, and hearest them, that they may come unto thee on every side for 
for thy whoredom. And the contrary is in thee from other women is in thy whoredoms, whereas none followeth thee to commit whoredoms, and in that they givest a reward, and no reward is given unto thee. Therefore thou art contrary. Wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because thy filthiness was poured out, and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers, and with all the idols of thy abominations, and by the blood of thy children, which thou didst give unto them. Behold, therefore, I will gather all thy lovers, with whom thou hast taken pleasure, and all of them that thou hast loved, with all of them that thou hast hated. I will even gather them round against thee, and I will, and will discover thy nakedness unto them, that they may see all thy nakedness. Ezekiel sixteen fifteen to thirty seven. Fuck, that's a mouthful. <laughs> the great whore in Ezekiel is the same great whore in Revelations. God in Ezekiel has given us a clear clue as to the nature of the whore of Babylon. First, the reader must understand that Ezekiel is writing during his captivity in Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, conquered the city of Jerusalem and brought the Jews and treasures of the city back to Babylon. It's 2 Kings 24, 10, 16. Ezekiel is one of the captives and described the corruption by the Jewish religious leaders who were adopting the heathen practices of the Babylonian religion. Ezekiel described the origins of the harlot Old Jerusalem of the Judaism of Judaism. The old Jerusalem is distinct from the chaste and holy New Jerusalem, which is made up of those who have made who have saved by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. See Revelations twenty one two. Notice that Egypt and Chaldea, Babylon, are two of the nations with which Jerusalem had committed whoredoms, which are the very sources of the heathen practices in the Talmud and Kabbalah. Samantha P. said, Almost positive all Christians do. So Mormons, Baptist, Pentecostal, Lutheran, Jehovah Witness, Protestant, all of them believe in the Trinity and that faith alone washes away sins. I have actually heard that. M.R. Hemi 4 SPD said, America is the whore of Babylon. And that's actually what um, what the uh, the New World Order by A. Ralph Epperson says. He claims America is, is akin to the Antichrist, the false hope. <laughs> um, Jeremiah Prophet, where was I, explains that the whoredom of Jerusalem was following after the heathen religions by making images of men and worshipping those images. <clears throat> Excuse me. That is the same thing being done today in the Catholic Church. The Jews were also sacrificing their children to their heathen idols. The great horror of Revelations is similarly drunken with Samantha the blood of the P. saints and with said, the blood of the martyrs. Believing Jesus. in consequences and direct relationship with God is actually closer to Judaism than any Christian SECS. Mm -hmm. R. Spiegel. It's gonna cover some Welcome more to my channel. There's actually a chapter R. Spiegel in here called Communism said, is Judaism. What's up, sir? How you doing, buddy? Uh, having gaming issues, so I'm doing a little bit of light reading on a very heavy book. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? There's a little bit of religious education in here, too, if you want to stick around for it. The great horror of Revelation is similarly drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, Revelation 17.6. There is an unmistakable common link between the spiritual Kebab of the Church of Rome said, and the Jews of Totally Jerusalem. didn't stop at my house during delivery. Oof. Jeremiah Binkus prophesies for the people said, to flee out of the I was tough Jesus is God because Jesus came down as God as his son. He was a part of Jesus or something, soul. or he came down as Jesus. Uh, Jesus is just the written word made, made flesh. Binkus it's, it's a lot to take said, <laughs> or he had full power as his soul, son. But not cut R. Spiegel in her iniquity said, for this is bad the headache. Of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Jeremiah 51, 6. 
John offered an identical prophecy to those in Babylon the Great. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Revelations 18.4 The parallelism is unmistakable. The two Babylons suffer the same judgment of God. Pass over the cup from Jerusalem. Oh, this is getting, this starts getting good. I'm sorry to hear about your bad headache. Hopefully, this this reading will make it worse. He he he. Chapter three, passing the cup from Jerusalem to Rome. Poles kebab said, "Too funny. We are doing religion stuff according to David Metal War. You've metal lore. The band Kami means sent below from above." Poles kebab yeah. said, "Baby metal lore asterisk." Yeah, that's that's baby metal lore. That's that's not even a religion. <laughs> From the beginning, the Christian Church was in a spiritual struggle against Judaism. Judaism could not win in a head-to-head -head spiritual contest against Christianity. It was necessary for the Jews to throw their efforts behind undermining the Christian Church by injecting it with the Judaic contagion. Their long-term strategy was to change the Christian church from the inside out to align more closely with the Judaic Babylonian theos Theosophy. Philip Schaff, 1819-1893, in his History of the Christian Church, explains the strategy of these spiritual sappers. Now, I'm going to go on side tangent here. It was the Pharisees that did have Jesus Christ crucified. They were of Talmudic belief. They were sons of Abraham. So, yeah, that right there, they were Pols Jews. Kebab said, Chaos, your volume was a little, a little low. low. I mean, the only thing I can do is really move the mic closer to my face. That's about all I can do. Everything is cranked up. You may have to turn your phone up if it isn't already cranked all the way up. Don't be afraid. I want people to hear this. This shit needs to get out. Uh, oh, excuse me. Where was I? It was necessary for the Jews to throw their efforts behind undermining the Christian church by injecting it with a Judaic contagion. MR Hemi 4 SPD. The was to change the Christian said, church from the inside out. You was. Having described in previous chapters the moral and intellectual victory of the church over avowed and consistent Judaism and heathenism, we must now look at her deep and mighty struggle with those enemies in a hidden and more dangerous form. With Judaism and heathenism concealed in the garb of Christianity and threatening to Judaize and paganize the church, Judaism with its religion and its sacred writings and Greco-Roman heathenism Samantha P. with its secular said, culture, its science, Bingus. I was taught the same thing, but I also pray for clarity slash direction and let him lead me. Rather than swallow all put forth, I have faith that he will lead me in the correct direction. But even in Pols the apostolic age, said, many Jews and Gentiles that's better. were baptized only with water, not with the Holy Spirit and fire of the gospel, and smuggled their old religious notions and practices into the church. The same heiresses meet us at the beginning of the second century. The thence forth in more mature form and in greater extent in almost all parts of Christendom. They evince on the one hand the universal import of the Christian religion in history and its irresistible power over all the more profound and earnest minds of the age. Christianity threw all their religious ideas into confusion and agitation. They were so struck with the truth, beauty, and vigor of the new religion that they could no longer rest either in Judaism or in heathenism. And yet many were unable or unwilling to forsake inwardly their old religion and philosophy. Hence strange medleys of Christian and unchristian elements Pols kebab in chaotic said, ferment. 
https colon slash slash youtube.be slash 4k3 ui underscore c0 w4 the old religions did not die without a light said john 316 to john 321 is trippy by polls kebab ideas said this on the other hand scorpion is kicking the horn its nest again the specific truth of christianity to the greatest danger and oblige the church to defend herself against misrepresentation and to secure herself against relapse to the Jewish or the heathen level. Schaff received a two-pronged attack from what he called Greco-Roman heathenism and Judaism. In fact, those two prongs were two branches from the same Babylonian root. The Greco-Roman religion was esoteric in its polytheism. Judaism, on the other hand, was an esoteric polytheism. Judaism concealed its polytheism beneath the guise of worshipping Jehovah. It was therefore easier for the Judaizers to establish their own version of the Ersatz Christian Church. The heathen poison was disguised MR Hemi in for SPD customs, and therefore said, was found more palatable chaos to those without the uncut <laughs> unction of the Holy Samantha Spirit. P. Those said, no, I don't the think Spirit. that they've infiltrated to make Christianity closer to Judaism. If anything, I think they're purposely trying to lead Christians away from Judaism in hopes to confuse believers. That's why they do. That's yeah. That, you kind of contradicted yourself there. They're they're trying to make it. They tried to make it as close to Judaism without it overtly being like, hey. This is y'all shit. Keep your shit out of our shit. They infiltrated it and snuck it in there. Kind of like, you know, what they've been doing with the uh, the Transformer movement and shit. They, they're, they're teaching that men can be women and women can be men. You, you repeat the lie enough and eventually that lie becomes reality. That's, that's Voltaire. <laughs> Anyways, back to where I was. The heathen poison was disguised beneath the Jewish customs, and therefore it was found more palatable to those within, the, without the unction of the Holy Spirit. Those who had the unction of the Holy Spirit gagged on the poisonous Babylonian Judaic customs and speared it from the true Church of Christ. Those same Babylonian Judaic customs found a home in the Catholic Church. Ezekiel was taken by the Lord and shown how the Jews had turned from him and worship idols and heathen gods. See Ezekiel 8, 1 through 17. The Jews thought that the heathen worship was hidden from God. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. Ezekiel eight twelve. It was not the common Jews who were engaging in the secret worship of heathen gods. It was the seventy of the ancients of the house of Israel. All the elders. Ezekiel 11. Who were the seventy ancients? They were the members of the Jewish Sanhedrin. There were Samantha 70 P. members of the said, Sanhedrin. Yes, but what you're explaining is that they're trying to make it closer to Judaism, and what I'm uh -huh. saying is I think they are trying to make it further from Judaism. Uh, I think they're just trying to steer people away from Christianity altogether. They didn't... They made it similar, not, not f making it more like. They just added in little Judaic things that people wouldn't notice. That's that's what that meant. They were trying to make it more like it, so but enough to where nobody would notice. The common Jews were kept in the dark about the secret heathen worship. They were exposed to the oral Polska traditions Bob of the Jews, said, which they ignorant folk. KFC for a lunch. Yeah, that sounds great. Not really. Go to Golden Chick. Not realizing that they nullify God's laws, Jesus revealed this in Mark. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandments of God, that ye may keep 
your own tradition, Mark 7, 9. The oral Jewish tradition has esoteric meanings that were hidden from the uninitiated common Jews. That is the way it is today, both amongst Jews and Catholics. So the, the people on the lower rungs don't know, but the higher ups, they know. The heathenism of the Jews was ever so subtle. Jesus warned about that subtlety. He likened the false Judaic mixing of the heathen worship with God's laws to leaven. A little leaven works its way through the whole loaf. The Jews created a mixture that on the surface appeared godly, but was in fact a holy leavened loaf of heathenism. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven, leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Samantha Sadducees. Samantha P. Matthew 16, said, 12. Gotcha. Yep. Paul also warned about the Judaizers that were trying to interject, inject their Judaic doctrine into the church. He warned, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Galatians 5, 9. The subtlety of the Judaizers even deceived Peter in Galatians 2, 11 to 13. We read how Paul had to upbraid Peter for being deceived to follow after the subtle dissolution, dissimulatory customs of the Jews. Peter caused Barnabas to fall into the same Judaizing error. The same Barbanus, Bar Barnabas, wow, however, was quick to recognize the clear heathenism when the Laotians sought to worship Paul and him as God in Acts 14, 11 through 15. Both Barnabas and Paul rent their clothes and ran among the people telling them to stop their heathen worship. The esoteric heathen worship of the Laotians was obvious to Barnabas, but the esoteric, wait, exoteric, wow, okay, but the esoteric heathenism of the Jews was so subtle that Barnabas was taken in by it. See Galatians 2.13. The Judaizing strategy resulted ultimately in the establishment of the Catholic Church. There is historical evidence for the common Babylonian lineage between Judaism and Roman Catholicism. After the fall of Jerusalem, Kabbalistic Jews migrated to Alexandria, where they synthesized their Chaldean witchcraft with Neoplatonic philosophy and cloaked the religion in Christian terminology. They then tried to introduce this new heathen Gnostic philosophy into the fledgling Christian church. The penetration of the true spiritual church of Christ was futile. What this Jewish Gnosticism did accomplish was the creation of a new ersatz Christian church, which grew into what we now we know today as the Roman Catholic Church. Those facts have been concealed from the historical accounts of the Catholic Church. The Vatican knows, but they ain't gonna tell nobody. Maurice Penny in the book The Plot Against the Church Bingus explains a spiritual said, fight waged by Irenaeus If there is an everlasting Lions. life that's real, I'm we'll down. Find out when we die. Circa 130-202 against the Gnostic heresy that was being injected into the church. Maurice Penny is alleged to be a pseudonym for a group of Catholic priests. According to Penny, one of the lead purveyors of the Gnostic heresy was Valentinus. Valentinus was a crypto-Jew who tried to keep his Jewish roots secret when he migrated from Alexandria to Rome. He migrated with the MR Hemi of for SPD himself as a Christian said, in order to dry as toast chaos. Dry as toast. Uh -huh. There's important stuff in here, man. You say it's dry, but it gets, it gets juicier as the chapters go on. He migrated with the intention of portraying himself as a Christian in order to undermine the Christian church at Rome with his Gnostic doctrines. Valentinus gained great influence in Rome and was even a candidate for bishop of Rome in 143 AD. Irenaeus discovered the Jewish roots of Valentinus and found out what Valentinus was up to. Irenaeus exposed Valentinus' anti-Christian heresy. Valentinus was 
a disciple of Thaddeus, who in turn claimed to have been a disciple of the Apostle Paul. Thaddeus taught as a secret knowledge, Gnosticism, that he falsely claimed was taught to him by Paul. The only reference to Thaddeus in the Bible is a reference to him from the Pharisees Gamaliel. Gamaliel stated, For before these days rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. Acts 5.36 it is not clear if the Thaddeus mentioned in Acts is the same Thaddeus whom Valentinius followed. That is because it would seem that Thaddeus mentioned by Gamaliel would have died before Paul's Christian conversion. And so Thaddeus could not have believably claimed to have been Paul's disciple. The claimed discipleship of Thaddeus, however, could have been a fiction later engrafted upon the ledge of Thaddeus by his scattered disciples. In any event, if the Thaddeus mentioned in Gamaliel's is the same Thaddeus followed by Valentinius, it would have been impossible for Valentinius. All this stuff is important, so you have to bear with it, okay? Valentinius was not born until approximately 100 AD in Egypt, which would have been long after Thaddeus died. According to Gamaliel, Thaddeus was slain and his followers were scattered. From Gamaliel's vintage point, it appeared or vantage, it appeared that the movement of Thaddeus was brought to naught. However, it seemed that Thaddeus' Gnostic philosophy lived on through Valentinius and his disciples. Paul warned about the Jewish heresy, he described their actions, and that because of false brethren unaware brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Galatians 2.4 Notice that the false brethren came in secretly pretending to be Christians as a way to bring them into bondage. Bondage to what? The passage makes it clear that they were spying out the liberties in Christ, and so the bondage would be to inject into the church a false gospel. This strikes at the heart of that liberty. That false gospel is salvation by works, which is the heart of the Jewish Gnosticism. Paul made that clear in his epistle to the Romans, which was a church that was being particularly targeted by corruption. Paul explained how the Jews were trying to rebel against God's plan of grace as a means of salvation, and instead instituted a salvation Binkus by obedience to the law. Said, the people who sat in darkness saw a great light, to those who sat in the region and shadow of death, to them light has dawned. Binkus but you're good. said, I had to put that Salvation instead, institution of salvation by obedience to the law, for they be being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Romans 10.3 Paul warned about those who were bent on per preventing Primo Living BC gospel of grace. said, You should do Bible reading live streams. I enjoy listening. I'm about to start playing COD, and I'm gonna keep listening. Okay, nice. Cool. Uh, I'll I'll take that, and you know what? I'll do. I'll start doing. Oh, you know what? I'll take a page out of Hammers. I'll start doing a Sunday sermon, except I'll actually read from the Bible, and then we can discuss it, if if y'all want, and I may be able to answer some things. We all might have answers that none of us don't have answers to. So, and this is how, this is how it's supposed to work. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Paul repeats... Wait, where the fuck was I? Da, 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 da. For I know that this is after my departure. Okay. Salvation is by obedience of the law, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Romans 10, 3. Paul warned, I already read that, about those who bent on preventing Christ's gospel of grace. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, of your Binkus own selves shall men said, arise, speaking The picture is a light things, in the distance. To draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years 
I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God Bingus and to the word of his grace, said, which is able to build which you Which looks up. like a nuke, no joke. <laughs> and to give you an inheritance among all of them which are sanctified. Acts twenty twenty nine thirty two. Notice that Paul commended the church to God and the word of his grace. It is the word of grace that the Judaizers would try to corrupt. The corrupt gospel of salvation by works, which was eventually given life in the Roman church. It clearly states the only way into heaven is through Jesus Christ. Paul repeats the point more directly in his letter to the Galatians. The Jewish Gnostics argued that obedience to the law was necessary for salvation. Paul, on the other hand, states emphatically that works of the law will not justify a person. He's correct in that thinking. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have to believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Galatians 2.16 Justification is by God's grace through faith alone. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8-9 For more detailed information on salvation by the grace of God alone, read The Anti-Gospel, The Perversion of Christ's Grace Gospel. I'm going to get that eventually. <laughs> Philip Schaff and History of the Christian Church explain how the false doctrine of salvation by works was founded upon Gnostic philosophy that found its way out of Alexandria. The Alexandrians, the Alexandrian fathers furnished a theor theoretical basis for this asetemit. Wow. Asceticism? That's a fucking tongue twister. And the distinction and the distinction of a lower and higher morality, which corresponds to the Platonic or Pythagorean distinction between the life according to the nature and the life above nature or the practical and contemplative life. It was previously suggested by Hermas about the middle of the second century. Tertullian made a corresponding opposite distinction of mortal and venial sins. Here was a source of serious practical errors and an encouragement both to moral laxity, an ascetic extravagance, the ascetics, okay, and afterwards the monks formed or claimed to be a moral nobility, a spiritual aristocracy above the common Christian people. As the clergy stood in a separate caste of inviolable dignity above the lath, who were content with a lower grade of virtue, Clement of Alexandria, otherwise remarkable for his elevated ethical views, requires of the sage or Gnostics that he excel the plain Christian, not only by higher knowledge, but also by higher emotionless virtue and stoical superiority to all bodily conditions. And he inclined to regard the body with Plato as the grave and fetter of the soul. How little he understood the Pauline doctrine of justification by faith may be inferred from a passage in the Stromata where he explained the word of Christ. Thy faith hath saved thee, as referring not to faith simply, but to the Jews only, who lived according to the law, as if faith was something to be added to the good works. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good works. Not done lost. There we go. Instead of being the source of principle of the holy life, Oregon goes still further and propounds quite distinctly the Catholic doctrine of two kinds of morality and piety, a lower for all Christians and a higher for saints of the select few. He includes in the higher morality works of supererogation, i.e. works not enjoined indeed in the gospel, 
yet recommended as councils of perfection, which were Thingus supposed to establish a said, peculiar marriage. To read through the historical events mm. that have happened, there's a whole yearbook of people that are in this yearbook when they drop the nukes on Japan. Oh, yeah. Let's see. He who does only what is required of all is an unprofitable servant, but he who does more, who performs, for example, what Paul in Corinthians 1 merely recommends concerning the single state, or like him, resigns his cl just claim to temporal remuneration for spiritual service, is called a good and faithful servant. Among these works were reckon martyrdom, voluntary poverty, and voluntary celibacy. Barbara Aho in Mystery Babylon the Great Catholic Jewish explains the significance of Shaft's historical account. Here we see that the false doctrine of the so-called Christian Gnostic resembled the salvation by works taught by the Gnostic Jews at the Platonic schools in Alexandria. It is worth nothing here that the Gnostics, Gnostic hierarchs, hierarchs were Jews, a fact well known to the true church fathers, who were their contemporaries. This huge piece of the puzzle has been missing in the sanitized accounts of the Gnostics disseminating to the Gentile world, but is readily available in the Jewish encyclopedia. It is a noteworthy fact that the heads of the Gnostic school and founders of the Gnostic system are designated as Jews by the church fathers. Some derive all heresies, including those of Gnosticism from Judaism. It must furthermore be noted that Hebrew words and names of God provide the skeleton for several Gnostic systems. This fact proves at least that the prin principal elements of Gnosticism were derived from Jewish speculation, while it does not preclude the possibility of new wine having been poured into the old bottles. Ooh, bong break! Bingus, join me! I think I'm almost done with this chapter. We're 18 pages into this. But I appreciate y'all hanging out and listening to this with me. <laughs> oh, I put this very useful knowledge out there that doesn't get taught in schools. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Edith Miller, Lady Queenborough, explains in her classic book, Occult Theocracy, the attack on the early church by the Gnostics, and how the Gnostics' infiltration gave rise to Ersatz Church, branches that were polluted with Gnosticism. Yet within a very short time after the death of Christ, Christian ritualism began to appear. If the theological system of dogmas and beliefs was devised. Modes of worship elaborated and a hierarchy arose with all its attendance evils. However, the Christian faith under the lash of persecution has shown the world the power of faith and charity, and against its power the forces of evil have ever been unfurled. Blow after blow was dealt to the rising church. Both its beliefs and practices were attacked by those who professed otherwise other views and worship of the gods and Samantha P all schemes said, to subvert and pervert I don't know one Christian sector that has ever spoken about grace through works alone exactly all Christian religions I've ever seen said the exact opposite yeah. thinking face exactly Sam that's why she this is why I've always struggled with religion in the first place because of all this <laughs> it's too much contradiction. Henceforth, as it has ever been with all religions, the history of Christianity and the, of Gnosticism will develop side by side, the perversion and destruction of the former being the aims of the latter. The tree of Christianity gave forth three main branches. The Catholicism of Rome, Greek Catholicism, and in the 16th century, Lutheranism. Thinkus said, if you look at the painting. Yep. Oh, man. So Lutheranism. 
Uh, the two former bodies remained homogenous, by Lu but Lutherism gave birth to innumerable sects, all dissenting from the parent church. Edith Miller concluded that Judaism sanctions Gnosticism, uh, excuse me, which is further elaborated in their books of the Kabbalah. Bingus. The Gnosticism that polluted the it's Matthew 3.16. was born of Judaic Babylonian occultism. I'm going to skip ahead after I finish this chapter to a certain chapter because uh, I need context for this before people come in and start going, yeah, it's a semi! I have never once said I hated Jews. And y'all can attest to that. I just question the ideology. <laughs> Arrhenius, who died in 202 AD, said, identified the Jews oops, sorry, as the not inventors that one. of the Gnostic philosophy that threatened to spin the early church into apostasy. Arising among these men, Saturnarius, who was of that Antioch, which is near Binkus. Daphne. And said Matthew 4 16 hold of some favorable opportunities and promulgated different systems of doctrine the one in Syria primo the living other BC at Alexandria said these men were rolling on the floor laughing practice magic and use images incantations invocations and every other kind of curious art they declare that they are no longer Jews and that they are not yet Christians, and that is that it is not at all fitting to speak openly of their mysteries, but right to keep them secret by preserving silence. Iranius wrote extensively against the Judaizers who crept into the church, trying to inject one's heresy or another. He explained in one of his writings how to how to Jewish proselytes Theodosian and Ephesus and Aquila. Oh, wait. Wow. Okay, that wasn't a name. That was Theodosian of Ephesus and Aquila of Pontus tried to undermine the prophecy regarding the virgin birth of Jesus by changing the passage in Isaiah 7.14. That passage in Isaiah states, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, I.D. Theodosian of Pontus corrupted the passage to read, Behold, a young woman shall conceive and bring forth a son. This Jewish corruption had never before been manifested in Scripture until after the fulfillment of the prophecy in Isaiah by the birth of Jesus Christ was mentioned memorialized in the New Testament. Iraneously quite properly points out that the change in Isaiah from virgin to young woman makes no sense. The prophecy in Isaiah is supposed to be a sign from God birth of Christ. Matthew explains it. Emmanuel means God with us. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call him his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Matthew one twenty three. If the passage states that the sign is to be that a young woman is to conceive, it loses all meaning since that is not a sign, since young women conceive regularly. The sign must be something unusual in order for it to be a sign. The virgin birth of Jesus was that sign as prophesied by Isaiah. The virgin birth of Christ is fundamental to Christianity. If Jesus was merely a man born of natural processes, then his death on the cross could not atone for the sins of others. He could not be the perfect, unblemished sacrifice. Hence, Jesus could not be the Savior. Again, you got to remember, the Pharisees, who were Jews, had Jesus killed, but they were also in bed with the Romans, so... Jews today argue that correct rendering of the Hebrew word in the passage should be young woman instead of virgin. They are wrong. The Hebrew word is Alma, and it means virgin. The argument of the Jews makes no sense. Since Jews reject Jesus as the Messiah, 
They are still looking forward to the Samantha birth of Samantha P. Messiah. said, I thought Mary was a prostitute. And that yes that's, she had an immaculate conception but then she was a prostitute. That's Not Mary, the same as being a virgin though. No, no, no. I must be mixed up. Yes, that's Mary, Mag Mary Magdalene was the prostitute I believe. Not uh, Jesus Christ's mother. Well, yes, they shared the same name. Um, I think he met Mary Magdalene at uh, when he at the, uh, at the I think it was the well in Gal Galilee. Bingus said. IWTF was going in the background of that painting. Bingus, post a link to that shit. I'll, I'll share it on the fucking screen. Jews today argue that the correct rendering, blah, 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 young woman instead of virgin, blah, 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 already got into that. The argument of the Jews makes no sense since Jews reject Jesus as the Messiah. Primo they Living still BC. Looking forward to the birth said, of the Messiah. Different Mary. Yep. How can they tell who, was the, who the Messiah is? since it is not a sign to be born of a young woman. The passage specifically states that the Lord himself shall give you a sign. The virgin birth is the sign that the child born of a virgin is the Messiah. It is very simple. If there is no virgin birth, there is no Binkus sign. If there said, is no sign, there is no Messiah. The Jews have painted themselves into a corner. If they maintain their position that the prophecy in Isaiah means that a young woman will give birth, then they have lost the sign for the coming of their Messiah. Why would they do that? Because their position is really on attack on Christianity. They cannot have Christ being born of a virgin, rather than argue whether Jesus was born of a virgin. They change the passage of the prophecy of the virgin birth, thus making the virgin birth irrelevant. If there is a prophecy of a virgin birth and the New Testament records a virgin birth, that means Jesus is the Messiah. They cannot change the account in the New Testament. So they do the next best thing. They remove the prophecy of a virgin birth from the Old Testament altogether. Crypto Jews and their Catholic fellow travelers are still pushing this corruption of the Bible today. There are corrupt Bibles, Bible versions that maintain that this Gnostic fiction and corrupt Isaiah 7.14 to remove the virgin birth. Revised Standard Versions, New Revised Standard Versions, New World Translation, Jerusalem Bible, New Jerusalem Bible. Those are just some of them. AV, so I'm getting stuff from King James Version. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's see here. AV, I don't know what that means. Uh, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin birth shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Is is Isaiah, wow, 714. I went less dexic for a second. The Lord will give you a sign in any case. It is this. The young woman is with child and will give birth to a son whom she will call Emmanuel. In the case of the Holy Bible, it is the New and Old Testament of God Almighty. They are the most important legal documents ever written. God Almighty is the test testator. He wrote both testaments. In addition, he created the languages in which his original testament would be written. He also created the language into which those testaments would be translated. Genesis 11, 7 through 9. He has supernaturally controlled the process from beginning to end, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, Binkus for instruction and in righteousness. Scariest shit I've seen. 2 Timothy 3.16 In addition, he Binkus was promised to supernaturally said, preserve his testament. Send it on Discord. Oh. Primo Living BC said. That's how they honey dick guys into yeah. being stepdaddy while Jesus wasn't Joseph's son. Yet, yeah. virgin mother is not the same as town bicycle mother, ha ha ha. Exactly, sir. They are not the same. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, 2 Timothy 3.16. 
in addition, he has promised to supernaturally, pres to supernaturally preserve his testament. The word of the Lord Bingus endureth forever. Said. And this is there the was word, a big ass bomb, which by the gospel is preached unto you. One Peter one twenty five. The heirs of Christ are Christians. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are all children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Romans 8.16-17 Crypto-Jews and Catholics cannot eradicate the word of God because God has promised to preserve it forever. They, therefore, have created a whole population of corrupt Bible versions, and that it will be difficult for Christians to figure out what is the true Word of God. The pure Word of God in the English language is the authorized King James Version. That's the closest we're going to be able to get to the original. Because King James himself rewrote it a little bit. He injected, you know, being able to get divorced and it not being frowned upon. The new Bible versions are based upon corrupt transcripts and the translations use a method translation known as dynamic equivalence rather than the formal equivalence used in the authorized Shiite version, poster. which is also Welcome known to as my the King James Version. Shiite poster. What's up? Said, Shiite poster, how you doing, brother? Victory hand, medium light formal skin tone, smiling face with word sunglasses. Word translation. Marie's dynamic equivalence is a thought for MR thought Hemi 4 SPD said King James was a P3 do Shiite poster yeah said just passing through latrine break pile of poo dashing away nah you you watch me while you're going fool I mean I saw your notification but it didn't pop up wait that's angler you ain't said shit in discord scrub Hyperlink that shit, fool. And a baseball corrupt transcript, blah, blah, blah. Formal equivalence is a word. For blah, blah, blah. God damn it. I hate when that happens. Translator using dynamic equivalence is, uh, is less a translator and more an interpreter. Thus, the new versions of the Bible should more accurately be called interpretations rather than translations. The dynamic equivalent interpreters of the New Bible versions have often made unfounded assumptions as to the meaning of particular passages. Rather than translate what God wrote, they have, with some frequency, twisted passages by injecting their own personal bias. Some of these interpreters have displayed malicious intent and caused great mischief. The subjective bias of the interpreters in the new Bible versions have caused changes in the new versions, English Bible, that are not supported by any of Greek or Hebrew text. For example, dynamic equivalence caused 6,653 English word changes in the new international version. Samantha P. said, My own heart leads me that way. Slightly smiling face. Yeah, you ain't sent shit to me. Last thing in our Discord is, is everyone okay? And me going mentally? No, we're all fucked in the head. <laughs> I've got some deleted users on here. Uh-oh. People got off Discord. Yeah, hyperlink that shit in the chat, fool. I need a hyperlink too anyways. Ah, you cunt. Alright, I'm gonna upload it. We'll just put it in pictures. Alright, where is... That's a media file I need not a window capture damn it I have to add it okay we'll go image add source oh 
What's this supposed to be a Bingus picture of, sir? said, The day we do. What exactly is this supposed to be a picture of? Oh! That's Jesus preaching on the... Bingus said, Big boom and your balls suck up. Okay. I see. Anyways, this just covers all the... Let's see here. Uh, English word changes in the new international version. Approximately 4,000 word changes in the new American Standard Bible. And approximately 2,000 word changes in the new King James Version. That's why I only go to the King James Version. Bingus. None said, of which are supported by Matthew 4.16. Oh, okay. Combined effect of having a corrupt text and then having that text interpreted using dynamic equivalents has been that uh, NIV has 64,098 fewer words in the AV. Said is the Fallout Bible 3. Okay. That is a 10% loss in the Bible. That means that the an NIV Bible would have 170 fewer pages than a typical 1,700 page Bible. AV Bible. The new version of the Bibles are materially different. They are the product of the imaginations of interpreters who have applied their personal prejudice to slant already corrupted texts to comport with their own ideas. They are truly counterfeit Bibles. For more detailed information on the corruption of God's Word in the new counterfeit Bibles, read Antichrist Conspiracy Inside the Devil's Lair. The Jewish corruption of Isaiah and the resulting theological view that Jesus was not the Son of God, born of a virgin, was neutered in the early church by the Jewish sect called Ebionites. The Ebionites followed the corrupt Theodosian and Pontus texts in support of their argument that Jesus was the son of Joseph. Ebionites were Jews that accepted Jesus as the Messiah but did not believe him to be God. Arrhenius stated that the Ebionites had an opinion of the Lord similar to that of Carpocrites, and that the Ebionites practiced circumcision preserved in the observation of those customs which are enjoined by the law and are so Judaic in their style of life that they even adored Jerusalem as if it were the house of God. Arrhenius explains the doctrines of the followers of Carpocrates. They practice also magical arts and incantations, filters with a PH, not an F, also in love potions, and have resource to familiar spirits. MR Hemi 4 SPD sending demons said and other abominations. Isn't it time for work? Getting there. I'ma finish up this chapter and uh and kind of discuss while I'm getting ready. <laughs> Others of them employ outward marks, branding their disciples inside the lobe of the e right ear. From among though these also arose Markelina who came to Rome under the episcopate of Ancetus, and holding these doctrines, she led multitudes astray. They style themselves Gnostic. They also possess images, some of them painted, and others formed from different kinds of material. While they maintain that a likeness of Christ was made by Pilot at the time when Jesus lived among them. They crowned these images and set them up along with the images of the philosophers of the world, that is to say, with the images of Pythagoras Binkus and Plato said, and Aristotle. And the you rest. notice how they are looking at the clouds in the background. Um, it looks like they're watching him. Are you sure they're looking at the clouds? I can't zoom in anymore. I mean, I can. It's going to distort the fuck out of the picture. 
Maybe not. I mean, he is pointing up. He might be looking up. He looks like he's looking at him. And it looks like they're all looking at him. Except for him and him. Uh-oh. Now, nah, let's go ahead and close that. It's your perception, sir. It's, it's Bingus the angle and everything. Said, it looks like it to me. Irene is explained that they have also other modes of honoring Bingus. these images after the same manner Said, of Gentiles. Followers Some are looking away. Carpocrates had such an elevated pride through their esoteric knowledge of magic that some of them declared themselves similar to Jesus. That is exactly what we see in, Roman, in the Roman Catholic Church today, where the official doctrine of the church is that the Catholic priest is alter Christos, another Christ. The Jewish Ebionites and followers of Carpocrates, whatever the fuck, Carpocrates were Gnostics steeped in Babylonian witchcraft, magical arts, and incantations. Some have argued that the Jews follow the Old Testament law and that therefore there is no harm for Christians to follow the Jewish customs. John Christomy Chris Chrysostom Wow. Who witnessed firsthand the early attempts to Judaize the Christian church during the 4th century puts that argument to rest. But at any rate, the Jews say that they too adore God. God forbid that I say that. No, Jews adore God. Who says so? The Son of God says so. For he said, if you were to know my Father, you would also know me. But you neither know me, nor do you know my Father. Could I produce a witness more trustworthy than the Son of God? Chrysostom warned against the threat posed by, to the church by the Judaizers, who were enticing Christians to follow their example of taking part in the Judaic Babylonian liturgy practiced in the synagogues. So is it that I extort, exhort you to flee and shun their gatherings? The harm they bring to our weaker brothers is not slight. They offer no slight excuse to sustain to the folly of Jews. For when they see that you, who worship the Christ, whom they crucified, are reverently following their rituals, how can they fail to think that the rites they have performed are the best and our ceremonies are worthless? For after you worship and adore at our mysteries, you run to the very men who destroy our rights. Paul said, If a man sees you that you that have knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not his conscience, being weak, be emboldened to eat those things which are sacrificed to idols? And let me say, if a man sees you that have knowledge, come into the synagogue and participate in the festival of the trumpets. Wow. <laughs> I fucking almost fucked that up. Shall not, his conscience being weak, be emboldened to admire what the Jews do. He who falls not only pays the penalty for his own fall, but he is also punished because who has stood firm is rewarded not only because of his own virtue, but people admire him for leading others to desire the same thing. What else do you wish me to tell you? Shall I tell you of their plundering, their covetousness, their ab uh, uh, abandonment, abandonment of the poor, their thefts, their cheating and trade? The whole day long will not be enough to give you an account of these things. But do their festivals have something solemn and great about them? They have shown that these people too are impure. Listen to the prophets rather than li uh, rather listen to the prophets rather listen to God and with how strong a statement he turns his back on them. I have found your festivals hateful. I have thrust them away thrust them away from myself. In Chrysostom's homely given 
at the Antioch church. He pleaded with the Christians not to follow the Judaizers who were attempting to entice Christians to follow the Jewish Babylonian traditions and liturgy. Let me say what Elijah said against the Jews. He has the unholy life the Jews were living. At one time they paid heed to God. At another they worshipped idols. So he spoke some such words as these. How long will you limp on both legs? If the Lord of God, our God is with you, come, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. Let me too now say this against these Judaizing Christians. If you judge that Judaism is the true religion, why are you causing trouble to the church? But if Christianity is the true faith, as it really is, stay in it and follow it. Tell me this, do you share with us in the mysteries? Do you worship Christ as a Christian? Do you ask him for blessings? And do you then celebrate the festival with, your, with his foes? With what purpose, then, do you have? Do you come to the church? Chrysostom was focusing on only one front of the Jewish attack on the gospel. While he was rightfully concerned about the enticement of Christians into following the Jewish liturgy, he did not perceive that within the Aristotle's Christian community was an active Judaic strategy of inculcating Babylonian mysteries. Chrysostom was laudatory of the Council of the Nisha and Nicaea, N-I-C-E-A. He did not perceive that very council set as set a dangerous precedent and was, in fact, a subtle attack on biblical Christianity. The Council of Nicaea was the first in a series of many councils that created an orthodoxy for Jewish Babylonian religious doctrine masquerading beneath Christian verbiage. It was the later Council of Trent, 1545 to 1563, that issued curse after curse upon all who adhere to biblical Christian doctrine. The edicts of the Council of Trent have never been rescinded and remained the standard for the Orthodox Roman Catholic Church. Included in the nature of and real objective of the Council of Nicaea, Nicaea, Nicaea is found in the fact that Emperor Constantine made a ceremonial entrance at the opening of the council. As Eusebius described Constantine himself proceeding through the midst of the assembly, like some heavenly messenger of God, clothed in raiment, which glittered as if we were with rays of light, reflecting the glowing radiance of a purple robe, and adorned with the brilliant splendor of a gold and precious stone. The council was not organized by church leaders. It was organized by a pagan emperor. Emperor Constantine Con organized the council along the lines of the Roman Senate. Sirius described the seating. On each side of the interior of the were many seats disposed in order, which were occupied by those who had been invited to attend. According to their rank, the fact that there was a perceived rank at the Council of Illustrative of the fact that it was not a purely Christian council. Jesus made the point that there is no rank in his church. But Jesus called them to him and said unto them, Ye know that they which are counted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And the great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. It's basically whoever's good at what they're doing, they're going to be in those positions. And if you're a flop, you're going to be a servant to them. Jesus had each believer, a king and priest within this church. There is no place for rank, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. 
Revelations 1 6. So the last shall be first, and the first shall first last. For many be called, but few chosen. Matthew 20:16. The only way that the first can be last, and vice versa, is if all are equal. In fact, it is anti-Christian to have a council of men deciding by popular vote what is and what is not Christian doctrine. True Christians rest on the authority of God's infallible word, not the votes of fallible men. While the Council of Nicaea issued edicts that offered correct biblical interpretations that was cover cover for the adoption of heathen ideology. For example, the council correctly condemned the error of Arianism. Arianism, okay. Arianism, in essence, held that Jesus was created. Incidentally, Isidrius, who was so impressed with the pageantry of Constantine, was a supporter of the Arian error. The council makes that correct ruling against Arianism, with the leaven of error by instituting the celebration of Easter Sunday. The Easter Sunday edict by the Council of Nicaea implicitly makes Jesus out to be a liar and a fraud, to suggest that Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday after his supposed crucifixion on Friday means that Jesus' prophecy of raising from the dead after three days and three nights did not come true. Jesus prophesies, For as Jonas was three days in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Matthew twelve forty. Between Friday and Saturday are only parts of two days, plus one full day and only two nights to say Jesus was crucified on a... This goes back into the first chapter. And it rose from the dead on Sunday is to deny that Jesus is God because his prophecy of raising from the dead after three days and three nights would not have been fulfilled with a Friday burial and a Sunday resurrection. And if thou say in thine heart, How shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Deuteronomy 18.21.22 To add insult to injury, the Council of Nicaea put the heathen title of Easter on the celebration of Jesus' resurrection. Easter is a word derived from the adoration of worship of the pagan queen of heaven, Astarte, or Ishtar. Tau outlaw. Welcome to my channel. Hislop states, outlaw. what means the Said. term Easter itself? Broly. Yee, what's good, outlaw? How you doing, brother? What means term Easter itself? It is not a Christian name. It bears Chaldean, Tau Babylonian outlaw. origin Said. on its very SS2 Gohan is better rolling on the floor laughing. SS2 Gohan will get his ass curb stumped by Broly any day of the week. Uh, it is uh, Easter's Babylonian origin on its very forehead. Easter was and is a pagan spring festival, which involved fertility symbols such as eggs and rabbits. Easter has nothing at all to do with Passover or with the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Calling Easter a holiday of the resurrection of Christ is mixing a heathen festival with the Christian history. Easter Sunday is a spiritual seduction whereby people have been convinced to follow the tradition of a Friday crucifixion and Sunday resurrection instead of the biblical account of a Wednesday crucifixion and Saturday resurrection. The false doctrine of Sunday resurrection misinterprets what took place when the disciples arrived at the tomb on the day after the Sabbath. Jesus had already risen from the time in fact, the disciples found the tomb empty, and an angel told them that Jesus had already risen. Mark 16, 1-6 Jesus fulfilled his prophecy that he would rise from the dead exactly three days and three nights after his burial. Matthew 12, 40, 20, 19 
Christ had risen from the dead late on the Sabbath day before the disciples arrived at the tomb. The council of Nicaea was a way from the Judaizers to subtly begin the process of establishing a heathen orthodoxy under the false cover of a council called to eradicate error from the Christian church. Chrysostom and many others were unaware that false brethren had crept into the council. It was that very thing the Apostle Paul saw happen at the outset. And that because a false brethren unaware brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberties, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Galatians 2.4 The Judaizers were ever so subtle, they even caused the Apostle Peter to fall for their error. The Judaizers have convinced Peter to separate himself from the Gentiles and congregate with the Jews to follow the Jewish uh, customs rather than embracing the spiritual freedom offered by Christ. Paul, who was a former Jew of Jews, knew what the Jews were up to and had to confront Peter about falling for their subtle deceptions. <clears throat> but when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did Samantha eat with P. the Gentiles. Said, Jesus' birthday is supposedly in spring and was never in winter. Exactly. This could possibly make it fall on a Sunday and the day of my birth which matches up with the birth of Siddhartha and several others. Mm. They, they moved it to the 23rd. I don't know why. Uh, those Paul and Galatians states that the Judaizers Tau were bent on bringing the Christians said, back into bondage. Hi, Samantha P. We see this same thing happen at the Council of Nietzsche. The Council Edicts were to be enforced. The Christians were to be brought into bondage to follow the new Judaic Babylonian Orthodoxy under Christian cover. Constantine used the force of government to bring the members of the Ersat Church, Ers Ersatz Church into bondage under the edicts of the Council of Nicaea. Constantine ordered that two weeks be set aside for the celebration of Easter, which includes a vacation of all legal processes during that time. Imagine that the Emperor, Pope of Rome, using his absolute authority to enforce the edict of the Council of Nicaea. When a religious custom must be enforced by government edict, that is a sure sign that it is not Christian. It is the very thing that Paul was concerned about in his letter to Galatians. <clears throat> Hislop states, the popular observances still attend the period of its celebration amply confirm the testimony of history as to its Babylonian character. The hot cross buns of Good Friday and they dyed eggs of posh or Easter Sunday figured in Chaldean rites just as they do now. The buns known to be the in identical name were used 69 in the worship of fire and find LV. You are I will L. Pran, Welcome to my channel. Off. Eat a 69 Megacom dick. Fire and Find LV, you are I will L, said. Hot Face Sweat Droplets Hot Face. 69 Megacom Fire and Find LV, you are I will L, said. Hot Face Revolving Hearts Smiling Face with Hearts Smiling Face with Hearts. 69 Megacom Fire and Find LV, Man. you are I will L. Said, Where are we seeing Love this letter white heavy check heaven. mark white heavy check Wait, mark. Blah, 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 blah. 69 Mars. Megacom okay. Fire and no. Find LV, you are I will L. Said, Love letter zany face zany face sweat droplets. Samantha P. Said, Man. Outlaw, slightly smiling face evening sweetens. That was annoying. <laughs> The buns known to by that identical name were used in the worship of the Queen of Heaven, the Goddess Easter. Where have we seen this Queen of Heaven mentioned by Hislop before? In Jerusalem, the Queen of Heaven was worshipped by the Jews during the time of Jeremiah. The children gather wood 
and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offering unto other gods, that they prov may provoke me to anger. Jeremiah 7.18 Once the Judaizers infected the Ersatz church with the Judaic Babylonian religious contagion of Easter, it was only a matter of time before the goddess Easter, the queen of heaven, made her appearance in the form of Mary. Today in the Catholic Church, the fifth glorious mystery, the coronation, recited during the Catholic Rosary, is a dedication to Mary, the Queen of Heaven. The official Catholic doctrine is that Mary is the Queen of Heaven. Hislop explains how the Babylonian eggs symbolize symbolism has MR been adopted by the SPD Roman Church. Said, "Sorry, chaos." I would have got the bot, but you putting me to sleep, so I missed it. Yeah, drink some coffee. I know it's kind of boring, but I don't know how else to make it entertaining. I can't play and read at the same time. <laughs> Tau outlaw. Now said, the Roman Church adopted. Hello to everyone. I missed flexed biceps. Egg, astra, as, astarte, and consecrated it as a symbol of Christ's resurrection. If form of prayer was even appointed to be used in connection with it. Pope Paul V teaching his superstitious votaries thus to pray at Easter bless O Lord we beseech thee this thy creature of eggs that it may become a wholesome sustenance unto thy servant eating it in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Scottish Guard April 1844 Kiesler, speaking of the East Church in the second century, and this is a long fucking chapter, Pascal Observance says, in it, the Pascal Festival is commemoration Samantha of the P. death of Christ. Said, they, the Eastern Jesus Christians, himself never said to create a new religion. Mm -hmm. He said that he was the king of the Jews. What I've been bread. led to believe is that he was trying to reestablish the original doctrine, not create a new one. Yep, he was. He was trying to he was trying to get he was trying to get away from man's law and get back on God's law. Primo Living B.C. Council of Nicaea said, predicted the Sunday Resurrection of Christ Ayo. is the foundation for the Orthodox Catholic doctrine of today. The Sunday Catholic Mass is the foremost Catholic Holy Day of obligation. Catholic law is that those who deliberately fail in this obligation commit a grave sin. That Sunday law is based on the traditional Catholic view that Jesus was crucified on a Friday and arose from the dead on Sunday. This Sunday doctrine was fostered by Constantine. There is convincing authority supporting the argument that Constantine was the first pope of the Roman Catholic Church. The Jewish History Sourcebook explains that Constantine was the first Roman emperor to issue laws which radically limited the rights of Jews as citizens of the Roman Empire. The persecution of Jews had the effect of driving them into Nascent Catholic Church, bringing with them their Judaic Babylonian traditions, Samantha P. and solidifying said, those that had already The Jade Doctrine root. was tainted by man. Yeah, he was. wanted to cleanse it. Instead, another religion altogether was born. Mtau Outlaw. One said, of the favorite attacks by Primo, the new Bible your brother flexed biceps. Is to claim that the word Easter in Acts 12 4 is an example of a mistranslation by the King James translators. They assert that the word Pashka should be translated to Passover, not Easter. Now, I do believe, I think I'm entering into a new chapter. Let me check. No, yeah, oh, wow, I went into chapter 3. Yeah, I'm still in chapter 3. So, chapter, f chapter 4 is Kabbalah and Talmud, so we'll get into that uh, when I get back tonight. I'm going to try and finish up the rest of this chapter. I think I got 8% left. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Now about the time of Herod, the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had appeared 
apprehended him, my bad, he put him in prison and delivered him to four Quartonians of soldiers to keep him intending Primo living BC Easter to bring said, forth the people. Pasqua is the Italian word for Easter. Yep. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched blah blah, I just read that. Then he killed James. I just read all this. This was Acts 12, 1 through 4. The so-called biblical scholars being their argument on the right foot, but then stumble on man's wisdom. They correctly note that Easter was and is a pagan spring festival. They correctly assert that Easter has nothing at all to do with Passover or with the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because Easter is in fact a pagan holiday. The New Bible version translates the Greek word Pashka in Acts 12 as Passover, thinking that God could not possibly mean to prefer to a refer to a pagan holiday in his holy scriptures. In Acts 12, 4, however, God is not using the word Pashka to describe a Christian or Jewish holiday. He is describing the intentions of Herod. Herod intended to wait until the Easter pagan holiday was over before he brought Peter out before the people. While Passover is one of the possible English translations for Pashka, the translation in the context of Acts 12, 4 is simply wrong. The more accurate translation is Easter. Samantha which is the P. Translation found in the said, King James Holy Bible. Getting a call, BRB. Yep, yep, do what you gotta do. I may or may not be here. Uh, let's see. Pashka is a word Tell for outlaw. Chaldean origins and means said, either Passover. Did I miss something? Or... Why are you reading the Bible? I'm not reading to the Bible. To explain a topic I missed, I take it. I'm I'm reading Solving the Mysteries of Babylon the Great. This has it goes into co it, it covers a lot of stuff that I've been covering in regards to communism, socialism, and how the Vatican and the Roman Catholic Church are behind a, a lot of the uh, ideologies that are being pushed nowadays. And it has quotes and, and sources in here. That's why I keep reading stuff off. It, 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 it's, there's reasons for this. But yeah, I am reading Solving the Mysteries of Babylon the Great. And uh, it's it's got a lot of very... But a lot of historical information in there. Stop, Garfield. Pashka, however, cannot possibly mean Passover in Acts 12, 4, because Herod intended to keep blah, blah, blah. The 14th day of the first month of the Jewish calendar is the Passover, Leviticus 23, 4-5, Exodus 12, 17, 8. Passover is immediately followed by the seven days of unleavened bread, Leviticus 23, 6-7, and Exodus 12, 15, 16. Because Passover is memorialized with unleavened bread, Exodus 12, 17 to 18, it and the seven-day Feast of Unleavened Bread are both referred to as the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's Matthew 26, 17, Mark 14, 1, 14, 12, Luke 22, 1 through 7, Leviticus 23, 6, and Exodus 12, 17, 20. Combining the Passover with the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we get eight days of unleavened bread that span from the 14th day Passover until the 21st day of the first month in the Jewish calendar, Genesis 12, 18. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy conviction, convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In the 14th day of the first month, at even is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seven days is a holy conviction convocation. Ye shall do not servile work therein. Leviticus 23, 4-8. In Acts 12, 1 through 4, we see that Peter was taken into custody during the day of unleavened bread that followed Passover. Passover had already taken place because Passover had already taken place by that time. It makes no sense for the passage to say that Herod intended to hold Peter until after Passover. The pagan holiday Easter, on the other hand, followed Passover and had not yet occurred. Herod was a Jew steeped in the Judaic Babylonian customs of celebrating Easter. 
Herod intended to hold Peter until after the pagan holiday of Easter. Therefore, the King James translations were correct when they translated Pashka as Easter, and the modern translations are wrong in translating Pashka as Passover. The translations of the New Bible Version are more concerned with changing and twisting God's words to comport with popular opinion than using God's word to change the world. The New Bible conversions are just one strategy among many to Judaize the Erstatz Church. While implementing their strategy of Judaizing Erstatz Christians, a Christian church, the Jews continue to nurture their separate Babylonian Judaic religion. The religious view of the Orthodox Jews is one of superiority. They view themselves as the rightful rulers of the earth. This is explained in the book, The Jewish Question in Europe. Who then, with dispassion, having investigated the facts and documents, cannot but conclude that there has never been ambition more mad and tenacious, and none more frankly stated as that of the Jews. They arrogate to themselves the conquest of the world, of reigning over all the nations by overthrowing them, of subjugating all the people to themselves, and they appropriate the right to stake their claim Cubing on all speed. of the blessings Welcome of the to universe. my channel. The Cubing speed. birthright given them Said. by God. Smiling it face with sunglasses, thumbs up, medium light skin tone. By a fistful of men, about eight million of them, who, of course, among five hundred million others, and who seriously wish to enslave Cuban them speed. and dream of doing Said. so. Dingleberries have me at round two, mm. beaming face with smiling eyes. Once the influence of the Jews is recognized by the national host, they are persecuted and thrown out of the country. Hence why they created the word anti-Semite or anti-Semitic. It was to avoid any questioning and dodge persecution so they could keep doing what they're doing. Uh, let's see here. Da, da, da. Oh, this is man. If, uh, there's no end to the persecution of the Jews which have been carried out before still and everywhere. But these persecutions were and are the consequences of their mad wickedness. All of this is manifested by the avidity of their ambition. By its legitimization, by virtue of their superiority, by their sense of privilege over the people they live among, now and previously, they have demonstrated themselves to be intra intractable and hostile evildoers towards the nations that have tolerated them and do tolerate them now, bestowing upon them, above all, the blessings of the right of citizenship. What causes the bodily politic to awake and recognize the need of to rid itself of the Jews? The discovery of the usury of the Jews is bringing about their ruin. It is usury which threatens the continued existence of the state and, if unchecked, leads to its ultimate destruction. The human cause of this fact, of the persecuted of the Jews, unique in history, are witnessed by the Jews' insatiable appetite for turning to usury to gain power, through betrayal in order to dominate, and whenever possible, to take over and overflow the state. In every country, this immutable law of Hebrew Primo living BC in every country said, is always to determine what's up cubing clinking beer mugs well being and Bingus of the inhabitants said I'm faded this is what happened to Rome which was economically and material subjugated to the Jews as were all the major cities because Rome was ran by the Vatican the threat posed by the Jews and the Vatican was ran by Jews popes, the majority of them were Jews. And I'll, I saw, uh, I'll bring that up eventually too. It's, it comes up later. The Jewish financial influence give it, gives them concomitant influence in religious affairs. The powerful Jewish banking family of the Rothschilds, uh, members of which are high officials 
in the prairie of Sion. Bingus. And the elders of said, Zion. They stabbed that one the dude. Financial. God damn it. Son of a bitch. Ha! <laughs> uh, he who pays the piper calls the tune. We see in John chapter 2, Jesus reacts to the corruption of the temple workership by the Jewish merchants and money changers. And the Jews' Passover was ha at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, Binkus he drove them all out of said. the temple. And the then the war the between those dudes and the other darker people went to war. Take these things, Hence, make not my father's said, house in house Just of like 500. The political power and influence Primo of the living Jews BC. stems directly from their said, control Unacceptable of views, banking. Jews. The current events in the United States is clear evidence of the historical fact. Representative Louis T. McFadden in May 2, 1934, address stated, it would be a monstrous mistake for any intelligent citizen of whatever nation to close his eyes to the evident fact that for 96 years the Jews have surely rapidly through almost invisibly climbed to the heights of government wherefrom the masses are ruled. Politically, financially, and economically, they have seized the reins of government of all nations and their invasion in the realms of social, educational, and religious fields is not less important. Bingus said, What you haven't experienced yet, Bingus said, as a fisherman. Yeah. Congressman McFadden, who was chairman of the U.S. House of Representatives Banking and Currency Committee, knew the power of the Jews wielded and the claims he's that they caused, just as the protocols of the learned elders of Zion provided. The Talmudic Jews control the money Binkus supply through a central said, bank. The it should Federal because I Reserve. fish their shit in the ocean. You want to know something? I'm going to say this. The Jews single-handedly funded the transatlantic slave trade. And that statement right there fucking proves it. U.S. government institutions. They are not government institutions. They are private credit and monopolies which prey upon the people of the U.S. for the benefit of themselves and their foreign and domestic swindlers and rich and predatory money lenders. In essence, the international Jewish money power used corrupt politicians to push through the Federal Reserve Act, which gave them a monopoly to print the money of the nation. The Federal Reserve Act Legalize the theft for a select few commercial banks that make up the Federal Reserve. Binkus. McFadden exposed methods that the Jews sometimes used it's to flat. obtain their Primo living BC power over the government said, of the United States. They were almost wiped out in the 40s and less than a hundred years later they have all the money. How does that happen? Because I think it was all propaganda. Ramajama Taylor. Welcome to my channel. It was all Ramajama Taylor fabricated. Said, Hell yeah. Because Binkus think about it. Said. Really. It goes right over stuff. Really think about it. All of the original communists were Jews. Marx himself was a Jew. Hitler was a Jew. Stalin was a Jew. They were all Jews. Communism is or Ju yeah, communism is Judaism. It's Talmudic Judaism. And, oh man, I think this is where Corey got the impression that I'm anti-Semitic. Have I said it all that I hate Jews? Somebody please answer that. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Where was I? Some people think the Federal Reserve bankers are a U.S. government institution. They are not government. They are private credit and monopolies, blah, blah, blah. I already got through that. In essence, the international Jews money power from corruption of government, United States. Okay, on to the next page. Representative McFadden revealed Grandma that Jamma in the Taylor speech before said, the House of Representatives been grinding honor points for four days straight. Primo Living BC said Revolution in yeah. Russia was financed by the Federal Reserve, which was owned by Jews. 
In addition, billions of dollars and millions of ounces of the gold deposits of the U.S. and United States were stolen by the Federal Reserve banks and sent to Germany. As he spoke in 1932, huge amounts of gold were being sent to Germany on a weekly basis. Why was this money being sent to Germany? To fund the Nazis? It was only a little over eight months later, on, on January 30th, 1933, that Adolf Hitler was sworn into Chancellor of Germany. Fuck Democrats, man! Ha <laughs> ha! <coughs> Let's see here. Journey within a year, Hitler had consolidated enough power with the help of the Federal Reserve that he declared himself Fuhrer of Germany. The gold he received from the Federal Reserve was used to build planes, ships, tanks, guns that were used to kill brave Americans during World War II. The Federal Reserve Board and banks funded both the communists in Russia and the Nazis in Germany all at the expense of the hard labor of the American middle class. Even during World War II, the United States funded the communist Russians through the Lend-Lease program. In addition to our own financial burdens of the war, the U.S. taxpayers funded the Germans and the Russians. The Jewish bankers, having funded both sides of the war, made out like bandits. As a consequence of Congressman McFadden's discovery, of treasonous criminal conduct on May 23, 1933, he brought formal criminal charges against the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve Bank, the Comptrollers of the Currency, and the Secretary of the United States Treasury. The petition for articles Primo of Living was BC thereafter said, referred to George the Soros Economics. Yep. Sell out your own kind for personal gain, the budget balances itself. Representative McFadden was chairman of the House of Bank currency committee and was in a position to do something about the banking monopoly. The Zionist MR Jew Hemi for SPD could not allow such said, a powerful person to oppose I do. their plans. They tried several times to assassinate Representative McFadden. They were un ultimately successful in 1935. They poisoned him. After Representative McFadden's death, the bill introduced by him was pulling pigeonholed in the Judiciary Committee and has never seen the light of day since. God admonished Binkus against destructive practice said, of usury. As people that pick potatoes, what do you think of people that have a heart for UFOs? Do. What? <laughs> okay, so, God admonished against the destructive practice of usury. See examples Exodus 22, 25, Leviticus 25, 36 to 37. Deuteronomy 23.19, Nehemiah, Psalms 15.5, and Proverbs 28. Why would the Jews ignore the commands Binkus of God against usury? Said, because the Orthodox we all Jews have a usefulness. do not follow the Old Testament. They have replaced God's laws with their traditions. They follow their oral traditions, the Talmud, which in part have been memorialized in the Talmud. As I just said, Israeli Shahak explains that although the Talmud forbids a Jew on pain of severance, severe punishment, to take interest on a loan made to another Jew, the rabbis have figured a con contrivance to get around that restriction. Leave it to Jewish lawyers to find loopholes and manipulate the system. A business dispensation called Heter Iska was devised for an interest-bearing loan between Jews. It basically allowed them to trade between. That they, this covers that history. The influence of the Talmud over the Jewish banking practices is witnessed by the fact that when Alan Greenspan, who is an atheist Jew, how the fuck are you an atheist? What? Makes no sense took his oath of office as chairman of President Nixon's Council of Economic Advisors. He did so on a volume of the Talmud. He later went on to be appointed chairman of the Federal Reserve by Ronald Reagan. God damn it. Fuck Reagan, you fucked up a lot, dude. Why would Greenspan, who is an atheist Jew, which that's a double entendre in itself, or double fucking whatever the fuck, Take an oath on the Talmud, which is a religious publication. 
because within the Talmud is found the doctrine of the devil that ye shall be as gods. Genesis 3.5 That is why there are a great number of Jews who claim to be atheists. In fact, some Jewish rabbis are atheists. Rabbi Binkus Sherman said, I will example, never give interest to Iraqi intelligence. He was the rabbi of the Birmingham Temple in Michigan. Rabbi Wine stated, I am an atheist. He expunged the name of God from all services at his temple. Rabbi Wine had a Jewish liturgy Binkus emphasizing Jewish culture. Said, History, they are fucking retarded. Along with, yes, they Primo are. Living BC said, Zeitgeist was a great Christ. documentary. Fuck, yes Anyone was. with half a brain will understand the financial system and usury after watching it. I'm proof of that. Am I still in chapter? I'm still in chapter 3. Jesus is a long chapter. Now Rabbi Wine is not alone. In December 2006, he oh, wait, 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 did I... Jewish culture, blah, 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 preferred God, blah, 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 died, uh, existence of God, Rabbi Wine is not alone, in December 2006 he traveled to Israel for the ordination of seven other atheist rabbis. How can you be preaching, oh, meh. When the Jews thrive, then also does the nation in which they reside in, like manner fades. The idea of restored Israel with a resulting world of Harmony and justice is just a cover story for the ignorant Goyim to conceal the Maccabi plan for world domination. Primo Living BC Yesiah said, Shibi, do be break. who is a religious authority on the Jewish Kabbalah, you take your phone with you, reveals that the presence of Israel among nations mends the world, but not the nations of the world. It does not bring the nations closer to holiness, but rather extracts the holiness from them and thereby destroys their ability to exist. The purpose of the full redemption is to destroy the vitality of the, all the peoples. This destructive influence stems from the Jewish core belief that the soul of non-Jews are evil. As in finance and politics, so also is religion. As the Jewish power and influence increases, then the Christian church suffers. Can there be any doubt that the Jews were supported by Julian in his conquest of Rome? All one needs to do is read the aims of Julian to perceive the hidden hand of the Jews behind Julian's ascendance to power. In the year 360, Julian, a cousin of Constantine, was proclaimed Roman Emperor by the army. Constantine, who had prepared for battle against him, died on the way. This made easier the final Binkus victory for Julian. Said, "Are you real, Primo?" Ooh, to renew the pagan belief said, and to again declare a state religion of the empire, so that Rome, which according to his view had declined through Christianity, might return to its old glory, to destroy Christianity, to concede to Jewry, <laughs> Jewry, <laughs> its old position. Binkus. With said, from which it if not, I'll jump your face. By Binkus and his sons. said, "Hump asterisk." <laughs> As the Jews gained influence, so also did the state increase the persecution of Christians. Hence, why Christianity has been so heavily shit on over the last fucking Primo six living seven BC years. Said, "Ha ha ha." Julian's reign only lasted three years. He died in 363 AD. However, it was enough for the Jews to kickstart a revival in Jewish scholarship in Rome. There was a revival of Hebrew studies in Rome centered around the local Yeshiva Metvita, Metivda de Matarami. A number of well known scholars. Primo Living Rabbi BC. Calonis, said, B. I've been smoking weed since 1994. <laughs> contributed to the Jewish learning and development. Roman Jewish traditions followed those practices practiced in the land of Israel, and to liturgical customs started in Rome, spread through Italy and the rest of the world. Fuck, man, that was a lot of reading. And normally I'm just reading in my head. So... 
That's the end of chapter 3. I'm going to have to change title to chapter 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> Primo Living BC. Wow. Said. It's a lot to I take in. the bong and everything brother. Mm. Bingus. Said. Whenever I date a girl that's in 2000, I'm like, oh shit. Oh yeah. Them are the wor them them are the indoctrinated ones. <coughs> My generation, uh, actually, I would say the generation before me, like the, my mom and dad and that generation, they dropped the ball. They allowed a lot of this to happen. They could have prevented it. The boomers started it. These fuckwits, our parents, fucking allowed it to keep happening. All because of the feel goods. This is why feelings don't belong in politics. Because feelings gets people killed, and it gets people fucked over. <laughs> Chapter 4 is Kabbalah and Talmud. I'll continue that tonight. And uh, I'm going to have to make an outro with that with that video I, I created. MR Hemi 4 SPD. Oh, hush. Said. Thank Christ that's over. <laughs> Education is important. I was made fun of because I focused, I was focused on trying to get in and get out. I wanted to get my education, get the fuck out. When you're able to pronounce words that kids your own age can't pronounce, you get made fun of. You get picked on. And then you end up beating the shit out of them to teach them a lesson. But this is all very important stuff. This all ties into everything, like what Hammerhand's been putting out there, what Chronic talks about. MR Hemi 4 what SPD. What absolute knowledge seeker said, is putting rolling out. Rolling on the floor laughing. And I do think starting Primo Living Sunday, BC said, I enjoyed it. I really do think starting Sunday, I'm going to start reading a chapter from the Bible. Maybe. I might just read a part. I don't know. I might go in order, like, I'll read Genesis 1 and all of Genesis 1, and then start another chapter for Genesis 2 and all that. There's a certain order you need to go in, and I'll probably, I'll probably just go in that fucking order. It's the best way to read the Bible is in chronological order, and you could go online, look it up, and it does it for you. It shows you what you need to read, and it, it, it you will, of course, see overlapping Oh, fuck no. <laughs> MR Hemi 4 SPD said, Oh, fuck no. Believe it or not, Hemi, there's a lot of knowledge in the Bible. I'm not, I'm not forcing religion down your throat or nothing, dude. I'm just reading a book. If you want to believe in God, that's your choice. Primo Living BC said, I should play COD for your background while you read. It would be I'm hilarious. I'm not going to be the one to say, well, you're going to burn in hell for all eternity. I'm not going it's to, not, it's not my place to judge. But if I'm going to judge, I'm going to judge right. I'm going to judge righteously. It's your choice if you don't want to believe in God. It's your choice if you don't want to believe in a higher power. It's your choice if you don't want to follow any of those doctrines. I'm just simply reading a book. <laughs> but what God? MR Hemi 4 SPD. The Bible said, is now. I believe in God. I MR Hemi 4 SPD. The King James said, version. Bible is bunk. I don't have the new King James version, which is indeed a pile of shit. I have the King James version. And that's about the purest form you're going to get before it before it gets fucked. But, yeah. I think I must start doing that. Anyways, fuck! It's almost 4 o'clock! I gotta go! Holy shit! Primo Living BC said, <laughs> The Odyssey is a great book as well. Oh, fuck yes! The Odyssey and the Iliad? Oh my god! Fucking great books. Long books. Oh my god. Any road. Shout out to everybody in the chat. I gotta take my ass to work. So, 
Let's see here, who we got? Ramajama Taylor, Cubing Speed, MGTOW Outlaw, Shiite Poster, RC Beagle, Post Kebab, Sam P, Bingus Primo Living BC, Mr. Hemi Four Speed, and the dirtiest rigger of them all, Riggs. Thank you for hanging out, everybody. I'm about to dip, dip, potato ship out. Thanks for subscribing. Your support has been greatly appreciated. And thank you to those who just recently subscribed. I hope you stick around for the long run. It's a very interesting game, sir. Y'all take it easy. I'm out this bitch. Peace! Fucks have run up dry I've tried to go fuck shopping But there's no fucks left to buy I've no more fucks to give No more fucks I've tried to get I'm over my fuck budget And I'm now in fucking debt I strive, strive, strive To get everything done I've played by all the rules, but I've very rarely won. I've smiled, I've charmed, I've wooed and laughed, alas, to no avail. I've run round like a moron to unequivocally fail. Chaos 4 is 728. Said, has blown. World of Warcraft is PC, sir. Fucks all day, but they've upped and fucked off home. I've no more fucks to give, my fuck rations are depleted. I've rallied my fuck army, 728 but it's been defeated. Said, the air Welcome at Iridium has Kush. just not been worth the time or the expense. I've exhausted all my energy for minimal recompense. The distinct lack of acknowledgement has now to realize that I don't give a fuck at all. I've no more fucks to give. My fucks have flown away. My fucks are now so fucked off they refuse to fucking stay. I've no more fucks to give. My fucks have gone insane. They've come back round and passed me while they're fucking off again. I've no more fucks to give, my fucks have all dissolved. I plan many projects, but my fucks won't be involved. I've no more fucks to give, my fucks have all been spent. They